I went backstage and there was Kid Rock and the band, the lads in the band, and they all sort of sat round, right, drinking this disgusting sort of cinnamon, was it cinnamon or was it cinnamon? Cinnamon tasting liqueur. Um, and just like uh, shooting the breeze, as we say in England, um, and yakking about. And they were talking about the difference between um, fucking and having sex. And it was, it was, a, it was a very intriguing debate. And I, I realized then that I was in the, in the presence of, of, of real genius. You know, I, I introduced them to the delights of Aftershock, which is uh, becoming a firm favorite in any band's rider. Uh, when they come up here, it's a purple, foul tasting mouthwash which after you drink it, you go into an aftershock, you want to kill people. It was interesting to be uh, in the presence of young men who obviously get lots of sex, being American rock musicians in England. I mean, they, you know, they have this joke, how do you make an English girl come? Who cares? He was an enjoy enjoyable character. He, he, there's a lot about him that is, um, he's fun to be with. Just like the fun-loving criminals are fun to be with, you know, a lot of the acts I book, I, I book because I personally get on with them, and I like going to the bar and t talking about groupies or, you know, whatever the, the subject of the day and getting right out of my face. It got very, 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 very sorry. This a certain band member who should remain nameless was humping like a dog, uh, like like a like a, a large dog. That's a clue for you there. In the uh, in the, uh, the toilet or the bathroom, as you call it in the States. Um, very, very noisily, sort of like, most of like a <laughs> This sort of noise. Uh, I assume they're having sex. They may have been watching uh, When Animals Attack on a handheld um, television or something. The, what I really liked about it was he went to the, he went to the dressing room, plugged in his laptop, deep, 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 came, came back and uh, said, what were you doing? Says, ah, oh, I've just sold another hundred thousand units in the in the states. What? He called up his account in, in the states with a with a computer to find out how his sales are doing. So he respects his business. You know, he's looking for. Am I doing okay? I, I, I thought, wow. It was um, quite startling to see the number of um, very scantily clad young females who were very interested in talking to the band. Although, because Kid Rock isn't all that well known over here, and the first question they asked him uh, they, as they eyed him up was, uh, you know, how big are you in America? And he was telling them they were big and very big. No, the thing I like a lot is uh, when airplanes fly over top, you know, and that's really cool. Um, but other than that, like, when you got all the, the big you know, muscle head guy, meat head guys out in the audience throwing quarters at you and stuff and telling you you suck and flipping you off and stuff. And then, and then, then, then you look at the girls standing next to him and they're all singing your songs. That's pretty cool. I'm using to watch the faces of the, the uh, English and Scottish uh, record company people. So far. Because they, they claim to live this, you know, not obviously the individuals who were there, but people in the rock industry in general, this kind of coked up, crazy, sexually liberated lifestyle that I don't think they'd ever seen anything anything like the debauchery, the last days of Rome time, decadence that happened in that dressing room. I don't know how Bob is when he's performing or when he's on the tour bus, but when you're next to him, talking to him, if you call him on the phone, it's just what's going on. It's not that thing where you got to ask him all a bunch of questions like what's going on in his life. You know, ask him how you're doing and what you're doing and if you like it and, uh, you know, just normal conversations. I have a special relationship with Bob. Uh, we, we go, to, go back a long way. Uh, we fought a touch for a while because obviously Bob's been working on his music and he has his own agenda and I have my own life, but he's always, he's on the road a lot. Uh, I talk to him about every six months. Uh, recently I was over there a couple weeks ago and we had to spend a good weekend together. Uh, me and a few other friends and our wives uh, went over there and I think he felt kind of good about it. You know, he's been on the road for a year and a half and uh, he was around some people they grew up with and tell stories and not just talk about music this and music that and how much money you got and all of this stuff and nagging them, you know, not asking for autographs, you know, just hanging out like he's one of, like he's Bob and he's, to us he's Bob. Kid hasn't shied away from putting stories from his hard knock life on wax. Past relationships get a grilling on the Devil LP. 
The track Black Chick, White Guy is an autobiographical account that plays like the best movie you've never seen. I really dig uh, on Devil Without a Cause. I dig Black Chick, White Guy, but that, I know that comes from way back on maybe, I think it's early morning, Stone Pimp. I dig that, and I dig, uh, you know, everyone's got to love, only God knows why. It's just, you know, a good, like, ballad song or whatever. Oh, yeah. I just, it, when I first heard that it was sang by Kid Rock, I was like, are you kidding me? He has a voice. He has talent. And I had, once I heard the song, I had to keep listening to it. And it's actually one of my favorite songs. I listen to it like 10 times a day. The track Only God Knows Why hints at his dissatisfaction at the lifestyle he has created. With a platinum record, girls at his feet, and fans beating down his door, this devil still finds the road a lonely place. I actually, I like his voice. And I like the lyrics. I like the way he sings it with so much emotion. It makes you kind of like, it gives you this depressing feeling, but it also just, it makes you so mellow. And I like that. He, his voice isn't, he's got so much in his voice that he finally shows. And that rather than screaming the way he does in all of his other music, you know, it's just, it's a whole different side of him. And it's a better image. Kid Rock was the star of the MTV Awards and the king of the Grammys. He followed a touch for a while because obviously Bob's been working on his music and he has his own agenda and I have my own life, but he's always, he's on the road a lot. Uh, I talk to him about every six months. Uh, recently I was over there a couple weeks ago and we had to spend a good weekend together. Uh, me and a few other friends and our wives uh, went over there and I think he felt kind of good about it. You know, he's been on the road for a year and a half and uh, He's around some people he grew up with and tell stories, not just talk about music this and music that and how much money you got and all of this stuff and nagging him, you know, not asking for autographs, you know, just hanging out like he's one of like he's Bob and he's to us he's Bob and uh, that's what's so good about him and that's why he's he's not done yet, you know, he'll go farther and farther and it's just cool just to be there, you know, he's playing the piano and what song he's gonna play for the Grammys and it's just kind of neat and uh, he just feels comfortable and relaxed. Bob is driven by his own success. He is self-motivated. He is not the type of individual that needs the pat on the back. And he has his own vision, and he knows what he wants. He'll be successful for the rest of his life. Because he, one thing he does, he appeals to like three different markets. He, he appeals to the rap group, uh, the heavy metal group, and now even to the country group. And uh, it just seems like more kids like this guy every, you know, buy his stuff every single day. And uh, that's going to make him successful down the road. So he's got a bright future ahead of him. He put in the hard work. I'm very glad about Bob's success. I think um, he worked very hard for it. And I wish him all the best. Bob will always be just Bob. America's guitar-slinging rock and roll pimp is heading for a long ride at the top. <laughs>